Hi, Mark Donovan here, and today I'm going to go over the topic of RAIM. RAIM is an important tool to use when you're doing an IFR flight and you're flying with a GPS navigation system that is not WAS enabled. So today I'm going to go over what RAIM is, why it's important to us, and how does it work. But before I do, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to this channel so you get notified when I come out with my next video. All right, let's get into it. What is RAIM and how does it work? RAIM stands for Receiver Autonomous Integrity Monitoring. It falls under the category of Airborne Augmentation System, or ABAS. Location, path, and schedule outages of GPS satellites are published, so GPS receivers can calculate in advance geographical areas without sufficient GPS coverage to use GPS navigation. GPS receivers supporting RAIM functionality generate a RAIM report for pilots to determine sufficient GPS coverage for a given flight plan. If determined that there's insufficient GPS coverage for a flight plan while doing a RAIM check, then a new flight plan has to be created or a different type of nav aid must be used, such as VOR navigation using Victor Airways, for example. So why is RAIM important? GPS by itself doesn't include any internal information on the integrity of its signals. Satellites can transmit slightly error data that can cause erroneous navigation to be computed by GPS receivers. But there's no way for the GPS receiver to determine this error using standard techniques. This is where RAIM comes in. RAIM uses redundant satellites to produce several GPS position fixes and compares them to one another to determine if a fault exists with any of the GPS signals. If there's a loss of RAIM during en route flight or prior to the approach, RNAV navigation for IFR flight has to be stopped and another form of navigation used, unless the GPS is WAS enabled. So if you don't have a GPS WAS enabled receiver, you're going to have to use something like VOR navigation. So let's get into GPS basics. The GPS system is comprised of a network of 31 orbital satellites that circle the Earth. At least 24 of those satellites are available 95% of the time. At least that's what the U.S. aims to, to achieve from a maintenance perspective. And each one of these satellites follows a different orbital path to ensure that at least four satellites in view are available anywhere on the Earth. Each GPS satellite is basically a radio with a highly accurate clock on board. These satellites orbit the Earth about 12,500 miles above the Earth and complete an orbit every 12 hours. They're in constant motion relative to a fixed position on the ground or in an aircraft. Orbiting GPS satellites transmit a signal down to the ground. Aircraft equipped with GPS receivers on board can pick up these satellite signals and can calculate a precise fix of their position up to within a few meters of accuracy. GPS receivers need signals from at least four satellites, however, to determine position accurately. But GPS satellites can have some errors in the signals that they transmit out, and an aircraft traveling fast over the ground can also lead to position errors. Some of those GPS transmission signal errors include ionospheric disturbances, timing, and satellite slash orbit slash slant range errors. So how does RAIM work? RAIM is a form of integrity monitoring performed within a GPS receiver to ensure sufficient satellite signals exist with accurate data for a flight plan. RAIM can be considered available if 24 or more satellites are operative. If less than 24 satellites are available, then RAIM availability has to be checked using approved prediction software. So there's a possibility you can still have RAIM functionality even with less than 24 satellites, but you need to do this RAIM check uh, to see if that's possible. So RAIM requires a fifth satellite to determine if any of the satellite's data are in error. RAIM uses redundant satellite signals to compute multiple GPS position fixes and compares them with one another to determine if a fault is associated with, with any one of the GPS signals from one of the uh, transmitting GPS receivers that it's picking up. If a satellite's data integrity is in doubt, it can be deselected and the position will be computed using the four remaining satellites. This RAIM feature is known as fault detection. However, once down to only four satellites of RAIM, functionality is lost, and thus GPS navigation for IFR flight is not possible unless the additional feature of fault detection and exclusion is supported in the GPS receiver. RAIM can still be maintained if a new sixth satellite is in view, providing a check against the four satellites that are working and included by the GPS receiver. So what to do if a RAIM alert occurs on an approach or even in route flight? If a RAIM failure slash status annunciation occurs prior to the final approach waypoint or final approach fix, the pilot must not initiate the approach or descend, but instead 
proceed to the missed approach waypoint or map via the final approach waypoint, perform a missed approach, and then contact ATC as soon as practical. If the rain flag slash status enunciation appears after the final approach fix, the pilot should initiate a climb and execute the missed approach. The GPS receiver may continue to operate after a rain flag or status enunciation appears, but the navigation information should be considered advisory only. And this is all per the aim. RAIM offers two kinds of fault messages. Insufficient satellites are available for RAIM, and RAIM detects an outlier satellite in the navigation solution. Does my GPS receiver support RAIM? Well, first, check your GPS avionics airplane flight manual or flight supplement manual to see if it supports RAIM. Uh, GPS-only system, non-WAS enabled, uh, they're going to be compliant with either TSO C129 or TSO C196 which basically is for airborne supplemental navigation sensors for GPS equipment using aircraft-based augmentation. So TSO C129 and C196 compliant GPS equipment allows IFR pilots to file RNAV flight plans and conduct LNAV approaches or LNAV slash VNAV approaches if Barrow V navigation capability exists on the aircraft. GPS receivers with fault detection and exclusion allows pilots to file to either their destination or alternate airport based on GPS lines of minima, but not both. Uh, lastly, the Garmin GTN 650, which we use in the aircraft that we're flight training in, supports RAIM. So if we want to do a RAIM check before IFR flight, what we want to do is look in our avionics. This is a Garmin GTN 650. We're going to go down to utilities, and we'll see RAIM prediction. And we can see it. We'll make our waypoint some airport, let's say uh, K Lu. Uh, we'll take Lebanon, uh, arrival date, the 18th of October, and we'll say the arrival time, we'll say 10 a.m. local. All right, and then we'll say compute the RAIM, um, RAIM available, you can see it right there. So we can go on this IFR flight and know that we have uh, receiver integrity uh, to actually fly approaches into that airport. So that's a summary on RAIM, what it is, how it works, and why it's important to us, particularly for flying IFR flights in aircraft that have GPS avionics that are not WAS enabled. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel so you get notified on my next video.